Hi. Now suppose I had this equation x cubed minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. How could I solve it? Well one way would be to say draw the graph. Draw the graph of y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1 and we've got the value y then equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 along the x-axis here. So you can see we've got three solutions, three roots as we say. And they look approximately, let's just put the roots for approximately, well the first one looks round about minus 2, a little bit more than minus 2 I think. Next one here, say about 0 0.5 and this last one well, about 1.5. So we've got the approximate roots. And even if I were to look at these closer I don't think I'll be able to give them to a great deal of accuracy. So is there a better way? Well one way is by a method called iteration which I'll show you how to do. What we do is we take our equation and we make one of the x's in the equation the subject. And there's various ways of doing this as I'll show you throughout this tutorial. Let's suppose we make this x here the subject and I start by adding 3x to both sides so we end up with x cubed plus 1 equals 3x and if I reverse this and divide both sides by 3 I get x equals one third of x cubed plus 1. Now what I do here once I've made x the subject in terms of other x's here, I change this to xn plus 1. This is a subscript, it's written below the line. And on the other side, wherever I have x's in this equation here, I just write x with a subscript n. And this one is cubed, and then we have plus 1. So there may be more x's in other equations on this side, so you just keep writing x with the subscript n. And this is called then an iterative equation. Now how do we use this? Well let's just take our first value, which we call x1, to be roughly where this root is here, 0.5. Our first approximation to the root then, called x1, is going to be 0.5. Now, what we do is we set n equal to 1. And when n is 1, you've got x1 add 1, or x2, equals 1 third of, and n is 1, so we've got x1 all cubed plus 1. But what is x1? x1 is 0.5, so we have 0.5 cubed plus 1. And if you work this out on your calculator, you'll find you get 0.375. Okay. What we hope is a better approximation to this root. To get a, a better one still, what we would need to do is let n equal 2 and that will give us x2 add 1 x3 the third approximation so x3 would equal a third of x2 remember n is 2 x2 all cubed plus 1 but what is x2 well x2 is 0.375 so we've got 0.375 all cubed plus the 1 and if you work this out on your calculator, what you get is 0 0.3509 and so on. Now to get x4, what I'm going to need to do is do one third of this value cubed plus 1. And repeat this process for as long as it takes to get the required degree of accuracy, assuming that it converges, that is tends to a particular value. Now that could be quite tedious, but there is a quick way of doing this. Now assuming that you have 
a scientific calculator and it's got a button like this, an ANS button, or it might have enter or exe on it, okay, then you should be able to do this process very efficiently. What you do is you take your first approximation, in this case 0 0.5, and you put it into your calculator. 0.5, so you do that, and then you press equals, it sets it up. And now we turn to the iterative equation. In this case, we've got the xn cubed plus 1 divided by 3. Now, for the xn, x subscript n, we have to type that in as answer, ans. So, what we do is we'll start with the brackets and we'll put ans and that, in this case, I'm just going to press the cube function here, plus 1, close the brackets, and divide by 3. So what this is saying is 0 0.5 was the ANS value. So we've got 0.5 cubed plus 1 divided by 3, the same calculation that we did here. So that when we press equals, 0 0.375, that's x2. Now, that is now our answer value, 0 0.375, so by pressing equals again, we get 0 0.3509, and so on, x3. So you can see that if we press equals again, we get x4, x5, x6, and so on. And those values I've written out here. So we've got x6 then is 0.3473 and so on. And I could get x7 just equals x8, x9, x10 and so on. But can you see that it settled down to two decimal places at x6 to 0.35. So we can say that x equals 0.35 to two decimal places, 2dp. And let's see how this checks out on the graph. Well, instead of our approximate root being at 0.5, we can now say that x equals 0.35 to 2dp. So that's one solution. What about trying to see if we can get another one then? Let's suppose we put 1.5 in for x1 x1 equals 1.5 and see what we get. We'll do this on the calculator. So we put in 1.5 as our initial value, press equals and then we'll go for the iterative equation that would be answer cubed plus 1 all divided by 3. Pressing equals gives us x2 and equals again x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, x9, x10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and so on. Can you see what's happened? It's gone back to the result that we had earlier that x was 0.35 to two decimal places. So it hasn't made any difference. So what's going to happen then if we try minus 2? Is that going to give us 0 0.35? Let's try it. Let's change this to minus 2. See what happens. So we enter minus 2. Minus 2 equals, then we'll set up the iterative equation. So bracket, answer cubed, plus 1 close the brackets, divide by 3, and then start pressing equals. So that's x2, x3, x4, x5, oh dear, it seems to be getting larger, x6, x7, g. Okay, this is what we call diverging. It's not tending to a limit. And this quite often happens when we're doing iterations. So how do we cope with this? This is no good for this particular starting value. 
So the way around this is to pick another iterative equation by making x another x in our equation up here the subject. Now suppose we try and make the x of the x cubed the subject by adding 3x and taking one from both sides. So we'd therefore have x cubed equals 3x minus 1. And what we could do now is take the cube root of both sides. So we get x equals the cube root of 3x minus 1. And we set up a new iterative equation. That equation would be x with a subscript n plus 1 equals, and here we've just got the 1x, so we would change that to 3, then x with a subscript n minus 1. Okay? Now, what happens if we were to say substitute minus 2 in? See what happens, okay? Let's x1 be minus 2. And so on the calculator, we'll enter minus 2 equals. And then we've got to do the cube root. So we'll just do this on here. On this calculator, it's the shift button and then the cube root. We're doing 3 times xn, which we press in as the answer button, then minus 1 and close that bracket and let's see what we get for the next iteration by pressing equals. So x2 turns out to be minus 1.91 and so on and that's x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8 and so on. Can you see that this is tending towards a particular number minus 1.88 to two decimal places and here's the result of all those iterations. So we now have that this root here is going to be equal to minus 1.88 to two decimal places. So we've now got two of the roots. We just want this one up here. Now if we try putting 1.5 in for x1, let's just remove that. And it just so happens that by using the same iteration, we get that it tends to a fixed value. It converges. Now here's the iterations that you'll get. And I'll leave it to you just to try that out. It converges to 1.53 to two decimal places. So we've got our third and final value, x equals 1.53 to two decimal places. Now if that hadn't have worked, you could try some other rearrangements of this equation up here. For instance, you could have made an x in here, the subject, by doing this. Look, suppose you were to go back and add 3x and take away 1 from both sides, get this line. What you could have done is divided by x squared and you would have had x equals 3x minus 1 all over x squared. And you could have changed that to an iterative formula, x subscript 10 plus 1 equals 3x subscript 10 minus 1, all divided by x subscript 10 squared. You could have tried that for some of your values, and it would either converge to a limit, or it would diverge. So be aware that sometimes your iterative equation will work or it will diverge. Now, I haven't explained why this particular idea works, but in my next tutorial, I'll explain the mechanics behind it.